Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I am here with a tag video. Um, I have recently been tagged in a couple of videos, and it's pretty exciting. Um, this is the most recent one, um, but I decided to film it first because it's a little bit more timely. Uh, it, it deals with gift giving and Christmas. Um, it is called the Booktube Giving Tag, and it was originally created by Elliot Brooks. I will link her original video down below. Um, and I was tagged by Katie over at Girl About Library, so thank you, Katie. Um, and this one, this tag is different, and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of twofold. It's a fun tag, obviously, but it also um, Elliot Brooks in creating the tag. She wanted to also try to raise money for a charity, and she is trying to raise money for Save the Children. So I will link the website for that also down below. Um, I think that's really cool that she's trying to not only do a fun tag, but to also help out those in need um, during the holiday season. And her goal is to raise $1,000 um, during this um, holiday season. So if you're interested in doing that, I will link that down below as well. But other than that, let's go ahead and get into the questions. So I have all the questions written down here, and the first question is, what's a book you would give everyone if you could? And I think the answer for that is, if you know me, you know what my favorite books are, I would probably have to say To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee because it's an American classic. Um, it's also The Great American Read, America's favorite book according to The Great American Read, but I think that it's one that people young and old get something out of. Um, it talks about really important social topics. Um, it's it's just a fantastic story, and I love it. So I would totally gift this to pretty much anyone, because even if you have read it, um, it's one that I think you should read again. Question two is, what's a book you couldn't give a rat's hiney about? Well, um, I think I have two answers for this <laughs> question. Um, the first one, and don't like, don't get mad at me, but Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen didn't do it for me. I believe I gave it a two-star rating. I just didn't like it. I guess I just don't get her. I don't know. And it's such a beloved book. I don't know. Maybe it was the hype. Maybe it's been, it had been hyped up so much in my mind. But honestly, it's like, it even has made me go like, I don't even think I want to read Jane Austen anymore. But then I'm like, oh, maybe I should give her another shot. I don't know. Also, um, one that I haven't read, or a series I haven't read, all the Sarah J. Mass books, all of those like Court of Mist and Fury, Court of Thorn and Roses, Court of this, Court of that, no interest there at all. She has a million books out, and people seem to love them, but I just, I just don't, don't care to read them. Question number three, given that the holidays are coming up, what's a book you hope someone buys for you? This is an easy one. It's one of my favorite books that I read this year, uh, Educated by Tara Westover. I got that book from, I listened to it on audiobook um, from the library, and oh, I loved it so much. I want it on my shelves because I definitely want to reread it. I just thought it was a fantastic memoir. So Austin, hubby, if you're watching this, yeah, I would love to get a copy of Educated under the tree this year. Question number four, what's a book or series you've given up on? Um, years ago, I started reading the Stephanie Plum books by Janet Ivanovich. It was fun to start with. Very, like, light, fluffy, silly reads, honestly. Because um, it's about a girl named Stephanie who lives in New Jersey, and for reasons, you know, you kind of find out, she becomes a bounty hunter. And she's completely, like has no clue what she's doing, and the people, like, in her life surrounding her are ridiculous, <laughs> and it's just, they're funny books. They're fun, fun books. However, I read, there's probably, like, 20-something books now, and I made it to, like, I think 16 or 17, and was like, I'm just done with this series. It was, it was fun at first, but the, the book started getting really repetitive, like ridiculously repetitive, where I was just like, I feel like I'm reading the same book over and over again. So it was fun while it lasted, but I will not be finishing that series. Question number five, who is a character you wish an author would give more time to? And this is going to sound kind of strange, but um, Dracula by Bram Stoker. Oddly enough, though the book is called Dracula, I remember reading it and thinking, you know, uh, our main character, D, Dracula, 
he doesn't really make very many appearances in the novel. He's um, always kind of looming um, in the background somewhere. People are like, oh, he's coming, or where is he, or da da da. But he's not actually like, you don't actually get a lot of like actual time with him as a character. Um, and I thought that that was really strange. And I would have liked to get more into that character. Question six. Who is a character you wish an author would give less time to? This is an easy one because I just read um, one of the books that deals with this character. Um, and I just, I just can't. I just can't with him. <laughs> that character is Davy from the Anne of Green Gables books. He first makes an appearance in the second book, Anne of Evanly. I just read Anne of the Island, the third book. And I'm sorry, but he is so irritating. <laughs> and for some reason, Ellen Montgomery, he had so much, to me, he had so much time in Anne of the Island and also in the first book where he shows up. And I don't understand why. I just think that he's he's annoying <laughs> and I wish that I would have rather she had spent more time on some of the other characters um and not so much on Davy because he's just he just he's just not a character that I really care for question number seven if you had to give up almost all of your books which ones would you keep oh goodness <sighs> that's a really hard question because I really love my books they're like an extension of me you know but if I had to pick three out of all my favorite books out of all my books, and I had to pick three, I would go with Little Women by Louise May Alcott, um, because this is one that I re -re have reread quite a, like, probably like two or three, maybe four times, I can't remember, um, but it's like, there's a lot of nostalgia there, and it's just a story I really enjoy. Um, also, I would go with Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson, because I would if I'm looking to read and I only have three books in my possession and I'm looking to read something kind of funny and crazy but also um, very insightful and and the writing at times is almost also to me like poetic um, this is that book and then the last one if I want a creepy read that I would definitely read over and over again um, though I haven't reread it yet I want to that book was it by Stephen King because obviously I haven't reread it because it's so big but this book is so terrifying and I think it's just so well done um it's definitely one of his best works and I would have to have a creepy book you know for those times when I want to be creeped out question number eight what's the best book or bookish thing you've ever been given I'm gonna answer with two things the first one is my kindle I got this for Christmas pfft, at least 10 years ago it's a really old kindle this is a two I think a kindle two doesn't have a backlight yeah I love this Kindle. I, 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 my husband has been telling, you know, saying like, oh, you should upgrade and get a fire, you know, and I won't do it because I'm like, this one works great. I love it. It's old, but it gets the job done. And I don't want a different one. I don't want a new one. I want this one. <laughs> it's just, it has really changed my reading. Although, admittedly, this year especially, I've only read one ebook, which is really sad because I have a ton of books on here. Um, but, this is just so fantastic for traveling and when you're on the go, like having a Kindle is just, it's like a lifesaver. It's amazing. Um, I really think in 2019 I'm going to make more of, I'm going to make it more of a priority to read more of my ebooks. And then the other bookish gift that I received, um, when I graduated from college, um, I think I've said this before, you probably heard this a million times, I went to journalism school. I have a BA in journalism. And um, the director of our program, um, him and his wife, gave all of us a um, bookmark that she made, um, his wife made, uh, and it has the first part of the First Amendment um, on it, uh, which obviously is very important to journalists. And I've had to um, re-laminate it once because it got so beat up. And it used to have a little tassel, but that came off yeah. know, years ago. But I still use this bookmark. I really love this bookmark. Um, I thought it was a very thoughtful gift, and I love it. Question number nine. What's a book someone gave you that you wish you could give right back? And I don't have this book because um, when I read it, it was a book that someone lent to me because she was raving about it. It was a co an old co-worker years ago. And... Um, I didn't like the book at all, so I was happy to give it back to her. That book was Eat, Pray, Love 
by Elizabeth Gilbert. Beloved memoir. Best-selling memoir. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I liked the first part of the memoir when she goes to Italy and she's eating. She's eating all that yummy, delicious, wonderful Italian food and gains like 20 pounds. I was all for that. And then after that, I just lost interest and I was tired of, of her story and I didn't care. And um, I kind of cringe when people are like, oh, eat, pray, love, because I'm just like, meh. And question 10 is, name a time in a book that a character was given something really meaningful. And for this, I'm going to go with a graphic novel that I don't have because it was a library um, book when I read it. And it's called Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. And it's about this girl named Katie who's kind of down on her luck. Um, and there are things about her life that she, like decisions that she made um, in the past that she really regretted. And she felt like they made a negative impact on her life and the progression of her life. And so one night she meets this, we'll just say person. <laughs> she meets this person who gives her these mushrooms with the instructions to write down on a piece of paper something that, about your life that you want to change. Eat a mushroom, go to bed, see what happens. And so the book becomes her taking these mushrooms and trying to better her life and seeing if her life is actually better with these changes made. And it was just such a, um, for being a graphic novel, A, it was, I thought it was beautifully drawn. I loved the illustrations. I loved, and I loved the story because I think it had a really good message about being um, grateful for what you do have and for, you know, learning from your mistakes and not dwelling on um, decisions that you've made in the past. Uh, it was, it's a really good um, graphic novel and one that I would love to eventually own on my shelves because it's one I would definitely read again. It's really good and yeah, I really liked it. Alright, so that is the booktube giving tag. Um, I didn't think about who I would tag for this video. So, um, anybody out there, especially those of you who are doing Vlogmas and need like video ideas, consider yourself tagged. Do this tag. Um, if you want to do like this tag because it's kind of holiday related and you're looking for a fun holiday video to do, do this tag. I tag you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, other than that though, I think that's all I have for today. So I hope that you guys are having a great week and I will talk to you very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.